Hey folks, I'm H with Dr. Pink and today I'm talking about the Roka. The Roka. <laughs> Uh, but before we get started, make sure to subscribe to my channel, hit the notification button to get upgrades and new videos when they are released. And this is how the rocker sounds. <laughs> like 80s style. stuff like that um, it's basically a typical 80s 90s rock or heavy metal riff and some ideas how to play it and to get the, the really cool vibe out of it some licks and it's gonna be fun and it's good for you it looks probably harder than it is uh, it's pretty fast but the licks are really easy to play and it gives you really quite of a groove into your rock guitar. Let's get started. Okay folks, um, the track is in D, so the first little riff or little figure which happens this one here. This one here. You can don't even have to grab. Uh, this seems to be easy, but it's not so easy as you think. You have to play extremely precise uh, damped eight. So really extremely precise. You have to be like a robot machine, like ta 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 If you're not extremely precise, it won't give that groove and that pushing forward, otherwise it sounds blurry, sounds some kind of swampy and it doesn't really is cool. So first you just make put your hand in position here. Timing position. Just stay relaxed. Extreme precise. Yeah, so that's the first exercise to do. Now comes the Now comes the next. The, the um, chords are really easy to grab. You start with D5 here in the third fret, second fret. But the hand is the main thing which is happening. So when you play the chord, you release the damping position, you're just switching the hand out like this. See? That's how it's done. Then you can do one and two and three and four. And on four end, you, you go up here in the fifth. Then go four end, one damped, and back to the original. One and two and three and four and. and. See, that's how it works. Four and one and one and two and three and four and two. Oops. One, two and three and four and one and two. See, that's how it works. And then you continue and on four and you, of the next one you move here in the seventh fret. And you go back to the fifth. then you come back. It's always the same. 
you go in the end position on one you play here and four end and then one end you start on one end four end one end four end one end four end one end and that's it one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and and then either on three we make you make a six you on over two beats that will be here three zero uh, zero five zero five zero five zero five here then three zero three three zero it's really easy just make pull offs with them I mean the the track is 120 BPMs really fast but it's pretty simple either that one or if you come on four you just have make, you just make three five three zero and then you go back in position and you have to do the pull off it the open string here on the last one that gives you a little time is needed to go back to the riff let's do it And so it really works. You can do either the one filling at the end or the other one on three or the one on four. Um, they're not hard to play when they're fast, but not hard to play, but hard to hit the correct timing. That's the main thing, basically. Yeah. So that will be an idea to start with this. Now, if you want to go really into a rock guitar, you need a second idea to continue the riff. So. We make here power chords here in the seventh fret seven seven five five. So one one and two and three four one and two just in eights one and two and three four one and two play twice but when you play the second time you start the first note on four and instead of one so one and two and three four and one and hold it till one end so the same figure but you make this anticipation on four end so. yeah and then this is the first figure then we make a, an answer Then we go in the 13, 13, 12, 10, 7. Let's try it. It's really cool. It looks really simple and it is simple to grab. It's always the same chord. 7, 5 and here 13, 12, 10. But the timing so 1 and 2 and 3, 4. And this anticipation is the trick. Uh, it's a little bit of a trick. So now we have a second idea of a riff which you can add here. So let's give it a shot and combine these two things with each other. I'm going to switch on the delay again. So, oops, so. Start with this.
roll it down, now comes the solo. So what is happening here? Really, I mean, you just take the riffs, uh, the little fill-ins from the riff. Hammer on. And then here, pinch harmonic on the third. You can play it a few times and you can just exaggerate the pinch harmonics as they come. See, play the same thing three times, but the pinch harmonic got more and more exaggerated and this way you create tension but by repeating the same pattern overall you're gluing together the mu musical idea which you're playing so it's cool to play things two or three four times but you may have to have some motion in it and something has to change so you change the intensity to how you play it as i said we start <coughs> with the riff slow bring the riff then bring the second riff go back on the simple one and then we go into soloing and this way it gets really cool uh, at the end of the tutorial i'm going to play a sequence with all together to see how the whole thing works the whole thing makes a musical sense i mean improvisation this is just uh, bass drum and guitar so only three instruments so you have to be really sure what you're doing here and knowing what you're doing here and it's not technical not so hard but it's still you need to have control over what you're doing here so let's um, get more into soloing it's in D minor so you can play any stuff in D minor pentatonics that you already know need in position 4 here 5, 8, 5, 7, 5, 7 6, 8, 5, 8 or here, position 1 You can play the rock clicks which you already know, they really work, but the, at the end I'm going to show you a cool, really fast idea, but it's not so hard to play. But first the simple soloing, something like this. I mean, it doesn't really make sense to show you these licks because uh, they are not licks. I'm just playing a uh, giving space. I let I also, I mean, it's only dr uh, bass and drum beset, but also let the other instrument interact with, with what you do. This, uh, it's not about you soloing. You have to interact with the music which is happening. And this glues the whole thing together, makes it like war and not war. <laughs> you know what I mean? And that's something which now can be the put into licks. Is just feel the music, feel the color, feel the emotions, and get into it and just express it. But of course we need to have a highlight at the end, so this will be this one. Really simple uh, lick here with open strings in 60 notes. So 3 0, 3 0, 3 0, 5 0, 3 0. So repeat it again. Once again, and now we go to the A string, 5030, and stay on the 5. It's really simple when you play it slow. Yeah. 
Now we go up to speed. And of course, stop with the pinch harmonic. You can make it even wilder, wilder. I'm gonna get my wawa here. Let's see with the wawa. It's really cool. Again. Let's see, it sounds really wild, especially if you add the war, but it's not really so hard to play. So the trick is to build up tension, slowly get a high leg, get back, slowly up, back down. And this way you can become a real rocker, a real 80s, 90s rock guitar player, really cool one, and that's what we want in this tutorial. But the, the easy way, I mean, the licks are really easy to play. Yeah, folks, what more to say? Um, as I said, um, few things cannot be teach with tabs or with show. You have to play exactly like this. I'm just giving ideas. Licks can help to give structure or like landing points to the whole thing. When I play a whole song like this and improvise, I just let it flow and try to just do waves. That's what I try to do. Try to do waves with what you can do. Don't think I have to play this lick and this lick now, this lick now. That doesn't make any sense. Try to play waves. If you would record yourself and you think you played something perfect, like one lick, next lick, thing, then you probably listen to it and it sounds like robotic style. And if you get into waves, even you make mistakes or don't play totally precise, it will sound much better, much more emotional. And that's really my main uh, advice which I want to give to you play waves, play colors, I play red in this case, or I also sometimes uh, a car race probably would a good, be a good picture to imagine here, you know, go into a car race and this, I'm gonna play a car race, and whoa, 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 whoa. you know what I mean? And that's the way you create stuff and be creative, not by just playing a lick, 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 I mean that's, it's also not fun honestly. <laughs> yeah. Um, if you want to download the tabs and the backing track for this one here, um, it's available at HP Crazy Guitar Academy. Subscribe there. I appreciate it. Me and Dr. Pink, you would feed us and you also get all the tabs and it's really, it's much cooler. You can interact with other students there and ask for new tutorial stuff like that. And yeah. Um, Follow me on Spotify, follow me on Instagram, follow me on Google, HP Crazy. Follow me on, uh, that's about it, Facebook, yeah. I have a Facebook page, pretty much followers, but they don't interact so much. Good, now I'm gonna play a sequence for you, just letting it go and see, that I can see what I mean. I mean, I have nothing prepared, so I just try to get into the wave. That's what I, me and Dr. Pingle always doing, going with surfing the wave. It's not about, music is about emotions. Mm 